Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 655. My opponent uh, with the white pieces played e4. I go c5 and get a, a Sicilian, knight f3. And right here I choose to go for the uh, con Sicilian. The two lines that I know uh, best in the Sicilian are the um, classical Sicilian, which uh, I get into by playing um, d6. So you can play knight c6 and still get into the classical Sicilian that way. Um, but knight c6 is more often used to get into other lines, um, such as the Sveshnikov and Kalashnikov. Um, but e6 is a, a new a way of playing, not not new in general, a new way for me to play the Sicilian. It has a little different flavor than the, the classical. So I just, uh, for variety, I wanted to try out a different opening. So I've been trying to learn this. And um, so I did okay here. I, I kind of like this opening having played it for a while. So he goes d4, I take, and he takes back. This is a normal way of playing the open the open Sicilian, and then a6 is the characteristic move of the um, of the con Sicilian. If you play knight c6, that's the time and off Sicilian, which is similar, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm doing the con, a6, and uh, he goes knight c3, a normal developing move. Bishop d3 is the top choice, but both of those are quite good. Bishop d3, by the way, is an interesting move. Um, um, because I haven't developed, it's, it's a way of taking advantage of the fact that I haven't developed knight c6, and so there's no pressure on his pawn, so you can, you can bring that bishop out without worrying about uh, undefending the knight on d4. Anyway, and the con Sicilian continues with queen c7, although there is a line, as I think I mentioned in the video, with b5. I haven't tried playing that, but I saw that, and, and that also seems like an interesting line. But I'm going with queen c7 here, and knight c6 would transpose back into a time and off. So queen c7, and g3, the third choice here. So this is a move I hadn't seen before, and I didn't know. Don't have a pre-planned response. And um, so just knight f6, though, continuing to develop, seems like a reasonable way to play. And I think this is okay. Knight c6 is also playable in developing the bishop. He goes bishop g2. And now, this is the first place where I really get out of the book. I go bishop to c5. Um, and I'm still trying to learn all the nuances of where to develop this dark squared bishop. It seems like in this case, pushing the pawn to d6 and developing the bishop to e7 and putting the knight on c6. Those seem to be the ways to play this position. I think uh, knight c6 is the first move given here, but I think these three moves, if you look at them, could actually be played in uh, in almost any order, and, and the idea is really to play them all, to get a Skaveningen and set up with the pawn on d6, these two pawns, e6, d6, put the bishop here in front of the king, get the knight out, and uh, and then this bishop can develop later to d7, or if you push the b pawn forward, it could come out to b7, but that's, I always have to be <clears throat> very wary of that b pawn push with this uh, bishop on the diagonal, basically that kind of uh, <clears throat> limits the ability of me to push forward the b-pawn because at any time I do he'll have the e-pawn push which will be a double attack hitting my knight and the rook at the same time so so b5 rather is not a uh, not a great idea right here and I have to be careful if I want to play that move I have to set it up with uh, some uh, moves first like uh, d6 and knight c6 anyway so bishop c5 is not in the book here um, bishop c5 is an idea, I should say, in some cases where um, the f-pawn has come forward and, and this is a good diagonal for the bishop, but it looks like it's not as effective in this case. And um, right here, the chess engine thinks uh, white can get a pretty good edge here by playing knight c6, kicking the bishop, um, or knight b3 rather, knight b3 kicking the bishop. Uh, the bishop could go forward with the pen and just castling, and um, the engine likes white in this position. I guess, uh, yeah, white's got better development. This this bishop is easily coming out and pinning my knight. I've still got a couple pieces to develop and uh, I need to castle. So I think uh, looking pretty good for white here. Let's see, back up. Instead of bishop c5, yeah, I did look at one line involving knight c6. So knight c6, castles, d6, rookie one, and bishop e7, just to go for that setup I, I talked about. You got the Skavening and pawns here, and the knight on c6, and uh, I don't know, maybe later the bishop can come to d7. 
or perhaps there's still an idea of pushing the b-pawn forward and playing bishop b7. Just got to watch out for that diagonal. Okay, so that would be the fine way to play. I played bishop c3. Let's see, he didn't go with knight b3 and kicking my bishop, but he went with bishop e3. And so I'm actually um, f doing fine here. It's not like I've gotten into any trouble yet. Let's see. Oh, it's my turn. I castled. He castled. Now I go with d6. <clears throat> um, there is a line here. Um, I was wondering if knight c6 was going to be a problem because this potentially uh, loose bishop here, although I realized later I could take with the queen and defend the bishop. But actually, knight c6 is a mistake here. Um, so I just wanted to mention that since uh, I asked about it during the uh, live commentary. He can take. He gets a lot of forcing moves here. I have to take with the queen to defend my bishop. He can play e5, kicking my knight. Um, and then after a bunch of trades, I take here, he takes here, he takes here, I take here. He can grab this pawn, so he uh, he wins a pawn. <laughs> and uh, well, actually, it looks like a pretty good position. I still haven't developed my bishop, and I have to move my queen again if I don't want to. If I want to avoid the trade of queens here, and and white's a pawn up. So knight c6 would be a mistake, although not entirely for the reasons I thought. So d6 turns out to be a good move, and... Um, um, maintaining um, equality since he didn't play the uh, the most challenging move here at move eight. Um, I'm basically equal in this position. Goes knight a4, bishop a7, and c4. And this is okay um, against the um, the con Sicilian with these pawns here. Um, it appears that the Maroxi bind is not such a dangerous um, not such a dangerous weapon. So it often happens that that White gets in this. Uh, a C5 move, but doesn't seem to get a whole lot. A C4 move, but doesn't seem to get a whole lot of advantage out of it. So um, anyway, I need to finally <laughs> develop my knight. Bring it out to C6. He goes Rook C1. I was getting a little bit nervous with this pressure on the C file, and um, and I make a bad decision here. So just continuing to develop with Bishop to D7 would be the way to maintain equality. So I play a couple of uh, slightly worse. Uh, moves slightly off moves, and my opponent uh, does a good job of taking advantage of it. I was I was playing a higher rated player here, um, so this is the first of them. This exchange um, or these exchanges uh, uh, weaken the b6 square, which I wasn't really paying attention to during the game. But that's why these exchanges are a mistake. I take, he takes, I take, uh, he takes. I was just trying to kind of relieve the pressure here. But now he's got like a grip on this b6 where I can hop the knight in there. <laughs> that was the wrong arrow. This arrow. Uh, he can hop that knight in there anytime and, and kind of kick my pieces around and maybe trade his knight for the bishop if nothing if nothing better. Um, just just leaving the knight on b6 is kind of annoying too. And um, so there, and there's not much I should do can do about it. But my best uh, way of continuing here is once again to play bishop d7, get that last piece off the minor piece off the back rank and now he can drop in here and like i said he can he can you know i have to move my rook maybe bring it over here to defend the bishop he can trade off that knight for that bishop at any time but he can just leave the knight there as, as kind of a thorn in my side anyway i play rook b8 which is definitely worse and uh, so now he starts to open up the c file very logical play but even stronger, the strongest move here, the chess engine says, is rook f to d1. And uh, gives white a, a winning edge here with that move. c5, still strong advantage for white. Let's see, I took, he takes back, because he gets uh, peace activity. So different style of playing. I think the chess engine was just going for the material, actually winning that uh, that d pawn. Which, of course, is something in that scavening and structure that d pawn is the weakness. So you need to... Take care of it, but it can be uh, it can be handled if you if you play correctly. Anyway, and then um, my best move here apparently was queen to d8, but I didn't. You know, I, I would really hate to play a move like this, even though it's objectively the best. Just because uh, you know I'm going into a uh, end game where I'm just uh, worse here. White's pieces are more active, and and uh, I'm having trouble developing. But um, well, it turns out I have just enough time to get in the move e5, and that will allow me to get my bishop off the back rank, keep his bishop blocked, and um, and if he goes for the exchanges, 
Uh, it's probably about equal. I'll have knight versus bishop, but uh, his bishop isn't looking so dangerous at the moment. So it was all about the timing. I had to had to get that in right there, and I I would oh white's still better. I should say at the end of all of that, but uh, I would have chances to hold. Okay, I went queen e7, trying to keep the queens on, hoping to bring my rook over and chase his queen away. He went rook f to c1, good move, putting pressure on my bishop, which uh, doesn't seem to have any moves. I kick his knight away. And uh, but he doesn't. Uh, this is an example of a good play. He doesn't uh, respond immediately to my threat, but he makes a bigger threat of his own, activating his rook, chasing my queen away. So my queen has to go to d8 anyway. I didn't see another good square for it. Um, and yeah, I thought I thought the pressure was getting to be too much, and I really had to trade queens at this point. So he trades, and now his knight can hop into c5. And then. Uh, this is my last chance to play the uh, the e5 move. I could play e5 right here, keep his bishop a little bit shut out of the game, and more importantly, give my bishop some squares. I really had no squares for that bishop, and he could just uh, kind of pile up on it. So my move, king f8, I give that a question mark. My other moves were slight mistakes, but this is a, this is a blunder because, uh, uh, well, I have this kind of vague idea of, bringing a rook over here and up. And so I was going to use the king to support it to try and challenge this rook. But um, I don't have enough time for that. He's going to move this knight, and uh, and then he's going to have this pressure on my uh, bishop. The bishop has no squares it can go to. And, uh, <laughs> and so I won't ever be able to lift my rook up because my rook will be needed on the back rank to defend my bishop. So, like I said, I needed to play that move e5 and get that bishop off the back rank quickly. For some reason I didn't think of that e5 idea, but that would would have been a way to play it. And um, But anyway, um, white meets my blunder with an even bigger blunder. <laughs> he plays the uh, knight to d3, so I won't even ask you what's wrong with that move. He just places that uh, knight there where I can take it. And, um, and I should. Well, let's see. I guess I'm being a little too hard, maybe giving that a double question mark. Because if I take it, he can take my bishop, but it kind of solves all my problems, these exchanges. You know, he chases my king off the back rank, but, uh, you know, he doesn't have a whole lot here, and uh, and suddenly my rook is active. So and so the double question mark is harsh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I ignored that possibility, or if I thought about it, I thought I didn't like the trade, but the trade really helps me, it turns out. So I played bishop b7. Gave that a double question mark too for not not really analyzing that uh, rook takes d3 uh, correctly, and um, so now he's winning. He's got um, knight e5. Knight comes in here with uh, an attack on this pawn, and there's just no way to save it. So uh, so from this point forward, white white has a winning game. And he doesn't really give me any chances. Let's see. I, I try to activate my king. Let's let's just go through some moves. He grabs the pawn. I tr I take pawn too, but um, he gets his uh, pieces on the second rank, so or seventh rank. So that's more than enough compensation for that. Uh, well, it wasn't even compensation. I was just trying to get a pawn back. But he's going to get more pawns here, so he's going to stay up in material. I try to activate a little bit, but it's all losing. There's just one more interesting point here, which is. Uh, can you spot the best move for white in this position? Okay, pause the video if you want time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away now. The best move is rook to c7 mate. <laughs> nice little checkmating pattern. Something something you should always have in mind. The knight uh, on the third rank there, or the sixth rank in this case, cuts off the escape squares of the king to either side, so just placing a rook in front of the king, defended by any other piece, in this case another rook, is always enough to deliver mate. Typical, A typical mating pattern. Anyway, he just is grabbing material here, which is uh, simply winning as well. Let's see, I tried some desperation maneuvers, but none of this, none of this works. And um, let's see. He took here, and I resigned. He's a rook up, <laughs> and uh, this pawn is not going anywhere. So, uh, uh, well, it was a good game from uh, my opponent there. We both made some mistakes. I had some chances there, 
and uh, just didn't uh, didn't grasp them when I had them. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.